for us. Thank you for your many blessings. Yes, God. Your faithfulness. Your kindness. Yes, God. Your mercy, your grace. Yes, God. Your forgiveness, your patience. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for your love. Yes. But God, we're grateful that you are our God. Yes, Lord. Yes, you are. Each and every day, uh -huh. you show yourself strong. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Each and every day, God, you show us your love. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And God, we thank you. Thank you. But God, we pray that you will open our ears, yes, our hearts, our minds. Yes. Talk to us. Yes, yes, God. Draw us, oh God. Yes, God. Be glorified in this place. Yes, God. God, sanctify this vessel for your glory, God. Anoint ears to hear. Yes, God. Hearts to receive, oh God. Uh -huh. Do what you do in this place. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 We do again greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we do give honor to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and to all of you in your respective place. For it is good to be in the Lord's house Amen. on this another day. And, Amen. and as we assemble here, let me just take this time to give honor to God. He is our everything. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and to all of you in your respective place. Amen. And let me just say to all the mothers, to all the guardians, to all the care, caretakers, to all that have had to have and still have to have some kind of um, that, that motherly nurture that you give, that motherly wisdom that you give, that motherly care. We're thankful for all of you. We say Happy Mother's Day to you. And also, let me just say to the young people, uh, job well done as you express yourself Amen. Uh, to your mothers. Amen. Amen. That was a wonderful display of love uh, by way of your words. And to Sister Tanya, uh, God bless you and continue to do what you do. Uh, one thing I've learned is you never know who is watching you. Right. You never know who is going through what you have gone through. And I want to say this right here. Somebody's going to need strength. Amen. Always share your testimony. Let somebody know what the Lord did for you. Because what he did for you, he's willing to do for somebody else. Amen. If he healed you, tell somebody. If he comforted you, tell somebody. If he just blessed you in some kind of way, tell somebody. Because somebody needs to know that the same God that was there for you will be there for them. Amen. 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 So again, we're thankful to God. And let me just say this right here as well. Um, that's why I, I'm as hard as I am on people. Because I see, when I was in the back of my office, that these two persons have been real sick have been real, real sick. They have every reason to stay at home. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, guys. Are y'all listening to me here? Yeah. You that at home looking, watching, are you listening to me? Yeah. Sister Betty has every reason on, to stay at home. Yeah. But she presses her way. She yeah. wanted to be here. Yeah. And her family brought her here because yeah. she wanted to be here. Yeah. Her family brought her here because she wanted to be here. That's right. That's right. Secondly, Sister Toya just got out of the hospital last week. As much as she has been through, and as much as she dealing with right now, and yet she wanted to be in God's house on this day. That's why I'm as hard as I am because I hate excuses that have no merit to them. Are y'all hearing me in here? 
if you really want to be here, you'll find a way to get here. If you really want to be here. So I just want to applaud Sister Betty and her family because her family got her here. And again, to Sister Toy and her family as well. And just to all of you, uh, it's good to see Sister Elaine because she had been sick. And so, again, like I said, I'm just a no excuse kind of person when it comes to the Lord. Amen. Either you want to or you don't want to. Right. It's just simple as that. Amen. So again, we just want to applaud them on today and to all of you again for coming on this particular day. Again, let us stand, let us stand, let us stand. And go with me to the book of St. Matthew and to St. Mark. St. Matthew chapter 15 and St. Mark chapter 7. Same story, same story. So if you will, just keep your Bible open because we are going to share excerpts from both episodes. Same story. St. Mark chapter number, St. Matthew 15 and St. Mark 7. When you dare say amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, just for the sake of time, keep the Bible open though. But just read St. Matthew chapter, we're going to read that out loud. St. Matthew chapter 15. Verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast mm -hmm. and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat, it is not fit, it is not proper, it is not right to take the children's bread, meaning the house of Israel and cast it to the dogs, meaning the Gentiles. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat up the crumbs which fall from their master's table. In other words, Lord, we still got to have something. There's still something there for us. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto you, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Wow. You may be seated. Again, I want you to go to the book of St. Mark, chapter 7, because we were, we're going to go... We're going to start off in Mark chapter 7 and then we're going to go back to St. Matthew. Same story, but there's just certain details in each one that we want to share on the day. But St. Mark chapter 7 is where we have our start. Again, same story, same story, same episode, just different details to a degree. St. Mark chapter number 7, verse 24. It says, um, from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a an house and would have no man know it, but it could not be hid. I want to pause here, brothers and sisters. Again, this particular story in Matthew chapter 15 and in St. Mark chapter 7, both episodes open up with the fact that Jesus in this particular episode he is now in the region of Tyre and Sidon. Amen. 
But now in order to understand the reason why Jesus is now in this region, you have to go back to the preceding chapter. Uh -huh. So if you were to go back to say Matthew chapter 14, mm -hmm. and go back to say Mark chapter six, toward the end of both chapters, it is there in St. Matthew chapter 14 towards the end and St. Mark chapter 6 toward the end that we find out that Jesus and his disciples had come to the land of Genesaret. Uh -huh. And as soon as they had gotten there to the land of Genesaret, the people recognized who he was. And in Matthew's gospel, it says that they sent out and to all of the country round about them and brought unto Jesus all that was sick. And they besought or they begged him for the healing for the people, even if they were only able to touch the hem of his garment. Again, now understand, in the end of chapter 14 of Matthew, again, he's in Genesaret. Uh -huh. And as soon as he and the disciples are uh, on board the ship and get on land, at some point the people recognize who Jesus was. Amen. So he's in Genesaret, and when the people recognize it's Jesus, now they go through all the country, all throughout the region, bringing sick folk unto Jesus. Uh -huh. Begging him that he would heal them even if they were only able to touch the hem of his garment. Right, right, right. Now understand now, the Bible says as many as touched him were made perfectly whole. Perfectly whole now. Not just healed, but perfectly whole. Inside and out. Understand, brothers and sisters, again, all these people. Mm. I mean, the text said they went and got every sick person they knew and brought them to Jesus, begging him to heal them. Uh -huh. Text says, as many as touched his garment were made perfectly whole. Uh -huh. But now, also in the latter part of chapter 6 of St. Mark, it even says that the people laid sick folk that were in their beds, even laid them in the street. Wow. Brought them to the streets where Jesus was. Yeah. Put them in the street and just, just hoping that if he passed by, yeah. they can touch the hem of his garment. Yeah. And if they can touch the hem of his garment, something good would take place inside of their bodies. Yeah. 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 Your brothers and sisters, it just so happened that all of them that came, all of them that, that were brought there, they got their healing. Brothers and sisters, there was a lot of virtue flowing from Jesus' body. Again now, there was a whole lot of people that got healed. That means a lot of healing virtue flowed from his body. Keep in mind now, he was God but he was also man. So if he was also man, you have to understand that when healing virtue flows from you, when the anointing continues to flow from you, when people are constantly pulling on you, it can drain you. He, 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 it can drain you when folk are constantly pulling on you. So all these people got healed. But then, brothers and sisters, you have to understand, after all of this great display of power, uh -huh. after all of this great display of healing and restoration for the people, if you then go to the first part of chapter 15 in St. Matthew and the first part of chapter 7 in Matthew, the text lets us know that Pharisees and scribes that were from Jerusalem, they came to Genesaret where Jesus was. Now, understand now, Jesus had just gotten through healing a multitude of people. Just gotten through 
are glorifying God through the, the healing of the bodies and, and, and again healing took place and restoration took place. Great things took place in the name of the Lord. But now here comes the Pharisees and the scribes. Now, one of them asked, now, why are they coming? What are they doing here? Amen. Please understand now, they didn't come to applaud the great miracles of healing. All right. They didn't come to praise God for his goodness. Uh -huh. They didn't come to celebrate the Lord for all that he had done for the people. Amen. No, they came only to stir up trouble. All this healing virtue had flowed from his that had flowed from his body. People got restored and rejuvenated and renewed. It should have been a time of celebration, a, a time of, of, of rejoicing at what the Lord had done through Jesus Christ. But instead of these religious folk coming to celebrate what the Lord had done. These religious folk came only to stir up trouble. <laughs> what do you say, brothers and sisters? Can I tell you something? Amen. There are still people like these Pharisees and scribes today. Amen. Some folk only come to stir up trouble. Amen. Even in church, some people only come to church just to stir up trouble. Some people only come to board meetings to stir up trouble. Some people only come to church meetings to stir up trouble. Some people only come to your house just to stir up trouble. Don't care how much good has taken place. There are some people who just only have evil hearts. And when people have evil hearts, you can best believe that when they show up, they have evil intentions and evil agendas. I know y'all don't know no folk like that. I know y'all don't know folk that like to stir up trouble. I know y'all don't know anybody like that. Does anybody know anybody that just loves to stir up trouble? And it seems like every time you see them, instead of them saying good things, they always got some negative to say. They always got some bad to say. Never taking time to just thank God for what God has done. Always got, always talking negative about somebody. And some folk that just love to stir up trouble. Folk on your job that just love to stir up trouble. Folk in your department love to stir up trouble. Sometimes bosses and managers just love to stir up trouble. Is there anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? Have you ever worked a job that it seems like every time you get around folk, when they come around you, they don't come around you to celebrate you. They just come around you to stir up trouble. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been on a job and it seems like everywhere you turn, there was trouble all around? Care how much good is taking place. Amen. Some folk just love to stir up trouble. Yes, sir. Look at your neighbor real good. Neighbor? neighbor? Is he talking to you? Y'all had it like y'all was scared of me. Look at him. Is your neighbor? neighbor? Is Pastor talking about you? Y'all know I've been here 13 years, right? Amen. And y'all know I've been in some church meetings, right? Amen. So, so y'all know I know y'all, right? Amen. I can't believe it right there. All right now, all right, all right now. For now. <laughs> so you have to understand, here they come. Not to praise God. Not to celebrate people's healing and, and celebrate people's breakthrough, but they are only coming to stir up trouble. Amen. And you can read, if you want to, what took place. But for time's sake, I'm going to push on through that because after the Lord set them straight, uh -huh. he had had enough. Uh -huh. You have to understand now, okay. <laughs> again, he had just expended so much energy from healing a multitude of people. That's right. That's right. 
And now here come the scribes and Pharisees. Now they're coming in another direction or coming from another angle. So now here come them. Here they come. Now, now, now they're putting on his mind. That they're, they're putting on his spirit. Now, now he got to set them straight. Hey, can I tell y'all something? Folk will train you. Negative people will drain you. Let me tell you something. See, see, people have a tendency to think that a pastor's job is easy. Because, see, people tend to judge a pastor's job by Sunday morning. Not understanding that there's a whole lot more to a pastor's job than Sunday morning. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And you have to understand, brothers and sisters, when I was working at the mill, I didn't have the headache that I have now. But when I was working at the mill, I didn't have the grain that I have now. Let me back it up, say it again. When I was working in the mill, I didn't have the grain that I have now. Are oh, y'all listening here? There's a difference between working on a machine and working with people. Sometimes it's easier to work on a machine than it is to work on people. Because the people you're trying to work on will surely work on your last nerve. Sometimes talk to me, somebody. Pastor is not easy. Some of you have a job that you have to deal with people. And whatever your job calls you to deal directly with people, that can be draining. Especially when there are negative people. Do y'all know what I'm talking about in here? People can drain you. So sometimes if you work in a factory, work in a meal, work construction, after you have finished your job, you're feeling good because you have you have made your day and, and you just want to go chill. You are right. But when you have worked a job that you had to deal with people directly, sometimes when you finally get home, you just want to lay down and don't deal with anybody. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because negative folk can drain you. I know y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Anybody got a negative folk in your family? I see y'all got negative family members. See, I know why half of y'all doing that right there. Because half of your kids to the other hand, that's why you ain't saying that. How many of y'all that ain't scared to say it got some negative family members? How many of y'all wish some of them were here with you right now to hear this word? Negative folk will drain the life out of you. Are y'all hearing me here? That's why I try to stay from around certain people. Because if all you're going to do is drain me, you're not going to pour nothing in me. And when I'm trying to help you and you're making me worse, talk to me, somebody. I'm trying to lift your spirit and you're depressing my spirit. Talk to me, somebody. Negative folk can drain you. I know I'm talking right. How many of y'all ever been drained by negative people? Anybody ever left work early because of negative people? Watch this. Anybody ever left your house because of negative people? I know y'all ain't gonna say that. Look, then y'all better be careful now. We ain't got three bedrooms. <laughs> you can go sleep on the floor now. <laughs> After he dealt with them, he had had enough. Uh -huh. Keep in mind, yes, he was all God, mm -hmm. but he was still all man as well. 
He needed a break. So that's why he went over and his disciples, that's why they went over to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Hoping to catch a break from the crowds, including the scribes and Pharisees. Now, according to Mark's account of the episode, if you look at verse 24, it tells us that when Jesus got there, he entered into a certain house. And he didn't want anyone to know that he was there. Mm -hmm. That's what the text says. He entered into a house and would have no man know. He didn't want anybody to know that he was there at the house. However, the text says that it could not be hid. Now keep in mind now, Jesus, in the text, is now in Gentile territory. Yet even in Gentile territory, in a place where he wouldn't normally be popular, yet even here he is recognized because word has spread concerning all of the wonderful and mighty miracles he had done for so many people all around the regions of Galilee. Amen. So then, in reality, even though now he's in Gentile territory, yet his reputation got there before he got there. That's right. That's right. Again, now keep in mind, word has spread, spread way beyond of the miracles he had done around the regions of Galilee. Uh -huh. Y'all can understand, word has spread, people had heard about the miracles and the mighty works he had done and how many, how, how people's lives were changed and how people's lives were restored and how people's lives were, 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 were made brand new, how, how the Lord made a way in so many people's lives. Word has spread about his good works. So when he gets to Tyre and Sidon, he goes there thinking he can hide for a while. Right. He can hide out, he can take a break, he can have some me time. But because word has spread about him, uh -huh. his reputation was there before he got there. Right. Brothers and sisters, it has been said that our reputation precedes us. Therefore, we must be mindful of what we do. Well. Especially out in public. Talk back to me, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be it good or be it bad. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah. News can travel faster than we can. Yeah. Therefore, our name is in a place before our bodies get there. Yeah. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. Because news can travel faster than we can, our name can be, a, be in a place before our bodies even arrive. Yeah. Right. Right. Sisters, that's why it's important for us to make sure we act like somebody when we're out in public. Talk to me, somebody. Are yeah. uh, y'all hear me here? Yeah. It's important that we understand that, that we gotta act like we, 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 we love the Lord. We gotta, we gotta be who we say we are who we out there somebody is watching what we do. Somebody is listening to what we say. We got to understand that out there we got to be who we are and live the life. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me here? Yeah. 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 Somebody yeah. is watching you. That's right. Yeah. Now let's be honest, some are watching to see when you're going to fall. But there are others that are watching you that are watching your example. Yeah. Watching how you handle adversity. Yeah. Watching how you handle being cut off in the street. Yeah. Watching how you handle your boss talking down on you. Watching how you handle your co-workers uh, criticizing you and, and cut throwing you. That they're watching how you handle adversity. That's why you gotta be mindful of how you carry yourself in the public space. Yeah. 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 Are y'all hearing me here? Can I tell you?
you something even, ladies and gentlemen, you got to be mindful of how you dress in the public space. Talk back to me, somebody. I ain't saying you got to, ladies, I ain't saying you got to be out there with a dress down to your ankle bone, but what I'm telling you is you got to be careful of what you show in public. Talk to me, somebody, because your reputation will precede your presence. In here, Amen. you gotta watch how you talk. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. When you're in the grocery store, you gotta watch how you talk. Yeah. Even if somebody reached them and grabbed something that you thought you were gonna get, you can't cuss them out. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know how you had in your mind going to get me a car in the eggs. Yeah. When you got close to the eggs. Frank 
the late Frank and Ida Mae Boyd, uh, excuse me, the late Frank and Ida Mae Hammond, they had a book called Pigs in the Parlor. Hmm. It is a book dealing with deliverance. And even Ida Mae, she tells certain stories of how even little kids had demons inside of them. Amen. And God had to use her to cast devils out of little kids. If I had time, I'd tell you about even how she had to cast a devil out of a baby. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. You have to understand one thing about a child, most children can't fight for themselves. That's why they need their parents to know Jesus. Because when they can't fight for themselves, they need somebody to fight for them. Talk to me, somebody. When they cannot fight for themselves, the children need parents that know who Jesus is. Are y'all listening in here? The devil is after the children. Look around today. Look at our children today. Look at how many of our children are killing each other. Look at how many of our children don't even know that I want that, that identity now. Talk to me, somebody. Look at the condition of our children today. So disobedient, so disrespectful, and don't know who they are, don't know what they are, killing each other. So many of us is starting younger and younger and younger. The devil is after our children. Tell us, listen, it is not a phase, it's a demon in that child. All right. All right. <sighs> Y'all don't understand. If a child is in a house of unsaved parents, well. and those unsaved parents just full of wickedness, uh -huh. you have to understand, remember, devils need a body. That's right. And because that little child is not inhabited with the Holy Ghost, that means, again, that that child is, is, is also has the propensity to be to be to be possessed by a devil as well. Amen. A lot of our kids today are having to bear the repercussions of the evil parents. Wow. A lot of our children today don't have parents that love Jesus. Don't have parents that will discipline them. Don't have parents whose yes means yes and whose no means no. Don't have parents that want to talk and not just talk the talk. All right. A lot of our children today are jacked up because they have jacked up parents, a jacked up guardian. All right. All right. That's why it's important, brothers and sisters, for us as parents, especially when those kids are in our house, for us to know Jesus, to be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh -huh. To be able to model the behavior, the Christian behavior in front of their eyes. Uh -huh. Be able to see what's going on in our houses so that if there is demonic presence, we know how to pray against that spirit, know how to cast that spirit out of our house. Uh -huh. And even when our children are grown and out of our house, yeah. Yeah. we still have a duty to pray for them. Are y'all listening to me here? Yeah. The devil wants our kids. Yeah. He wants my child, my children, wants your children. Uh -huh. The devil wants our nieces, our nephews. The devil wants our kids, the grandkids. The devil wants the kids. Yeah. He wants the adults too, don't misunderstand me. But he definitely wants the kids. Yeah. Yeah. You got this woman, a daughter, has a devil on the inside. Uh -huh. I, I can't stress this enough. Huh. 
What you think of the phase may actually be a demon. Uh -huh. Let me say it again. What you think is a phase may actually be a demon. Uh -huh. What you think may be a mental discrepancy or mental disorder well. really may be a demon. Oh. Are y'all listening here? Uh -huh. Mental disorders are real. But demons are real as well. Yeah. And you have to know what is actually operating inside that person. Uh -huh. right. is, it an act, is it an actual mental slash physical handicap? Or is it a demon that has possessed that body and is now controlling that body for his purpose? Right. Keep that in mind, brothers and sisters. The devil wants our children, he wants you, adults, he wants me, he wants us dead. He wants us dead, he wants us dysfunctional. The devil wants us out of his way. Amen. Are y'all listening here? Amen. Amen. My Lord. Text says again, she was a Greek, Syrophoenician. She besought him, she begged him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Uh -huh. Again, brothers and sisters, her daughter needed help. Amen. And she couldn't help herself. Amen. There are some people that are depending on you yeah. and they need your help. Yeah. There are some people that need you to stand in the gap for them. Yeah. When their mama is not there, they need you to stand for them. Yeah. When their daddy is not there, they need you to stand for them. But nobody else is standing on their behalf. They need you to stand for them. Somebody needs you to stand in the gap on their behalf. Somebody needs help. Yeah. I'll tell you something. There's somebody in your family that needs help. Yeah. There's somebody in my family that needs help. Yeah. There's somebody in your department that needs help. There's somebody in your school that needs help. There's somebody in your classroom that needs help. There's somebody in our church that needs help. There's somebody that needs us to stand before the Lord. Say, Lord, will you see about my child? See about my brother? See about my sister? See about God? Somebody needs help. Somebody needs somebody to go to the Lord on their behalf. Are y'all listening in here? Yeah. There are some people that don't know how to pray. Yeah. There are some, some people that don't know, don't know how to come to the Lord. Yeah. There are some people that, that don't know who the Lord is. Right. But, but if you know the Lord, yeah. then you are that somebody that can help get them to the Lord, even if it's just through prayer, because prayer still works. Yeah. 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 This child needed somebody to intercede yes. on her behalf. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And what a wonderful mother she was. Yes. Watch this now. Even though she was a Syrophoenician, uh -huh. even though she was a Gentile, right. she was still a good mother to her child. Yes. Are y'all listening here? Yes. She still had a child's best interest at heart. She still understood her assignment as the child's mother. God help me here. Let me back it up say it again. She understood her assignment as the child's mother. Let me back it up say it one more time. This Greek woman, this South Asian woman, she understood her assignment as the child's mother. Too many mothers or too many women that have children have gotten their assignment messed up. Too many women with children have gotten their assignment crossed up. Your assignment is to be the mother, not their sister. Be their mother, not their best friend. To be their mother, yes. not their road girl, not their, not their road woman. If you are to be their mother, that's why 
A lot of my girls are messed up because their mother missed their assignment. Instead of the mother raising a child, she gave the child to somebody else for them to raise. Instead of the mother raising a child, left the child at home to raise themselves. Instead of the mother raising the child, she put a man before her child. God help me in here. Put the club before her child. God has put money before her child. So many women have missed their assignment. Now, you just want your children to like you. So instead of disciplining them, you let them do what they want to do. Just so they'll like you. What the good of uh, them liking you and they're on their way to hell? But what's the good of them liking you and then they separate father and father from the Lord? His mother, she knew her assignment. All right. That's a mother. Amen. She understood that my child didn't come here by herself. All right. She understood my child did not ask to be here. She was understood that my child cannot take care of herself. My, my child needs a mother's help. Can I tell you some brothers and sisters, it's good to have a good mother. Amen. Some mothers may not have all the education in the world, but they got enough love in their heart for their child. Talk to me, somebody. May not have all the money in the world, but they're making every sacrifice they got to make to make sure that child is seen them up. Talk to me as here. If there anybody in here that can testify that your mama made sacrifices, your guardian made sacrifices, your auntie made sacrifices, your grandma made sacrifices, somebody made sacrifices for you to have what you need. She understood her assignment. She understood her assignment. This mother understood her assignment. Preach it real. I've been out about. And I've seen mothers just talk, talk nasty and down and, and just so, so profane to their children. I can't stand to see a mother cuss their children out. Especially little babies and little kids. I, I see mothers cuss little children out like they were grown. Every wife and every woman ain't fit to be a mother. Talk to me, somebody. Just because you can birth a child don't mean that you need to birth a child because not every woman is fit to be a mother. Talk to me, somebody. This woman understood her assignment. I just got to pause right there because it, it, it made me feel good. To know that she understood her assignment. Amen. See, she wasn't all that as a woman, but she was all of that as a mother. All right. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? That's why you ought to applaud the women that have raised you. Amen. Are y'all hearing me here? Maybe it wasn't your biological mother. Maybe it was your auntie. Maybe it was your 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 your, your grandmother. Maybe it was your older sister. But but somebody took time to raise you. May not have had all that they needed to have, but they had enough to get by. This mother was not all of that to, according to society standard, but she was a good mother. Can I tell you something? Your mom may not have a lot of money, but you got, if you got a good mama, you ought to thank God for that. She may not have a, a lot of education, but if she's a good mother, you ought to thank God for that. May not have a big house, but if she's a good you ought to thank God for that. May not drive a fancy car, but if she's a good mother, you ought to thank God for that. May not have a house on the hill, but if she's a good mother, you ought to thank God for that. Because every time you open the refrigerator, there's something in the refrigerator for you to eat. You ought to thank God. Is there anybody here that can testify? God bless me with a good mother. You bless me with somebody that knew their assignment. 
In verse 27, it said, But Jesus said to her, Let the children first be filled. Right. For it is not me necessary, suitable, proper to take the children's bread and then cast it to the dogs. Mm -hmm. Now, what's, what needs to be understood is when he said, Let the children first be filled. When he said, let the children first be filled, it is from the perspective, yes, there's some left over for you, but it goes to them first. Uh -huh. They gotta get taken care of first. Uh -huh. So the fact that he said, let the children first be filled, it gave her a sense of hope. All right. See. It gave her a sense of hope that even though they're getting things first, even though they're getting filled first, even though they're getting blessed first, there's still a possibility there's going to be something left over for me. All right, all right, all right. Martin Luther King said these words, when a man lose hope, he dies. All right. Sometimes all you need is a bit of hope. Uh -huh. As long as you got a bit of hope, it encourages you to keep on pushing. And as long as you have a bit of hope, it, it, it keeps you believing that change is going to come one day. 
And as long as you have a little bit of hope, uh -huh. it keeps you pushing forward just a little bit further. Yeah. Because that hope, it encourages you, it keeps you believing that after a while, change is going to come. Uh -huh. After a while, things going to get better. Yeah. Hope is very important. She had hope. That's why she said again, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs from the master's table. That's right. Jesus answered and said, O woman, great is thy faith. Mm -hmm. Be it unto you even as you will. And her daughters may hold from that very hour. In verse number 30 of Mark chapter 7, it says, and when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. When she got home, the devil was gone, and her daughter was laying on the bed. When she got home, the devil was gone, and there was peace in her house. God help me in here. When she got home, the devil was gone. There was no more trouble in her house. When she got home, the devil was gone. Now there was rejoicing inside the house. When she got home, the devil was gone. Now her and her daughter could rest well at night. When she got home, Want the Lord to cast the devil out of your house. Is there anybody here that, that wants the devil gone out of your house? How many of y'all really want the devil to be expelled out of your house? If you want the devil to be expelled out of your house, you ought to lift your hands up and do like the woman and say, Lord, help me. Is there anybody here that wants the Lord to help you? Do you need the Lord to help you at your house? You need the Lord to help you at your house. Help you in your bedroom. Help you in your kids' room. Do you need the Lord to help you at your house? Yeah. Tell you something. Jesus was in the house that she was at. She came and she told him all about what was going on and she needed what she needed him for. When she got to Jesus, poured out her heart, showed him that she had faith in him. He worked a miracle <laughs> on her behalf for her daughter. When she got home, the devil was gone. Her daughter was laying on the bed. No more convulsions. Com convulsions. Can I tell y'all something? Amen. Y'all don't know, I don't say y'all, some of y'all may not know how hard it is to see your child tormented in pain and you can't do anything about it. Amen. I remember when my daughter was, I don't even think she's a year old yet. Might have been nine months, I'm not sure. But I remember she was at the Children's Hospital at MCG with pneumonia as a child. And I remember when we got to the hospital, her mama said to me, they want to do a blood transfusion. Now, I'm thinking to myself now, my daughter ain't with nine months old. And already, she did a blood transfusion because she has pneumonia. situation. But we had to make a decision because if the blood transfusion was going to help our child, I told her mother, we just got to do what we got to do. But I remember as days went by and I would go to the hospital and I would sit there in the chair 
And as I'm sitting there beside my baby's bedside, and I see my baby hooked up to all these tools. And my baby, nine months old, watching, looking at me, and to say, Daddy, why are you let them do this to me? I sat there helpless. Because all I could do is watch my baby girl lay in that hospital bed, hooked up the tubes, and I couldn't do anything about it. To see your child tormented or in pain or in discomfort or diseased to a point where you can't do anything about it, it's a bad feeling. Amen. One could only imagine what this mother had to go through. Day in and day out. This devil tormenting her child and she can't do anything about it. For the text said that her daughter was vexed with the devil, Amen. tormented by the devil, and the mother couldn't do anything physically about it. But thank God her mother had no sense. She didn't know Jesus for herself, but she heard about Jesus. She had no sense to give the Lord a try. If what I heard about him is true, then I need him for my house. Amen. Can I tell you something? You need him for your house. You need him for your child. You need him for your spouse. You need him for your mom and your dad. You need him for your grandkids. You need the Lord for your family members. You have a sister you need the Lord for. You have a brother you need the Lord for. You got some folk that you need the Lord for. Folk that can't get to them by getting here by themselves. And they desperately need your faith. They need your faith right now. Mama, your child needs your faith. Mama, your child needs your faith. Mama, your child needs your faith. I know they're wondering right now. They're out there wondering, doing their own thing. Keep praying for them. They're out there living beneath their privileges. Keep praying for them. They're out there living like they haven't been raised right. Keep praying for them. Good God Almighty. They're out there doing their own thing. Keep praying for them. Keep praying for them. They need your faith. They need your faith. Yes, Even your children are doing good. They need your faith to keep them doing good. They need you to cover them because the devil wants your child. And can I tell you something, mothers? Even you that have children that seem to be doing good. Can I tell you something? They don't tell you everything. They have some private struggles. They have some private pain. They have some things that they hadn't told you about that they're dealing with and they're trying to deal with by themselves. Your children need your faith. You think your child tells you everything. Your child doesn't tell you everything. They may front like they tell you everything then they keep you at peace. But there's something they had told you. They need your faith. This woman knew her assignment as a mother. Mothers know your assignment. Know your assignment as a mother. 
Even if your mother wasn't there, you'd be there for your children. Amen. Right. Even if your mother left you, don't you leave your children. Yeah. Even if your mother shows favoritism toward you and your siblings, don't you dare show favoritism toward your children. Right. Let your children know that mother love, mama love all of us. Amen. She loves the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mama love all of us. Yeah. Mama, you be an example of what a mother's supposed to be. You pick up where your mother fell on you. You do the right thing. Let your children be able to brag about how good of a mama you are. Amen. Despite everything you went through, my mama, she went through so much, but, but yet, yeah, let me tell you about my mama. Have that kind of testimony. Yeah. Be that kind of mother. Let go of the past. You can't change what he said, she said, they said, they did. You can't change it. Right. Let it go. Don't let the past cripple your future. Matter of fact, don't let it cripple your present and keep you from your future. Let it go. They did you wrong, let it go. Learn from it, let it go. Now you know how not to act. Now you know what not to say. Now you know what not to do because you've been through it. Don't let your children repeat what you had to deal with. You be the one that says the, the buck stopped here. I'm breaking the mold now. The, the, my children shall not go through what I went through. Know your assignment. Know your assignment. Mother, know your assignment. Even if your children have transitioned, there are some kids that need your love, Amen. that need your wisdom, yes, that need your nurturing, yes. that need your example. There's some other mothers that need your strength. Know your assignment. Know your assignment. Yeah. Mothers, know your assignment. Amen. If a Gentile woman knew her assignment, you as a Christian ought to know your assignment too. Amen. If nobody else knows their assignment, you ought to know your assignment as a Christian. Mothers, know your assignment. 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 Be the best you can be. Be the best you can be. Let us stand. Let us stand.